शो खुदारा शो हुसैन जाना النبي Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. One of the verses in the Noble Quran that is commonly used by the Umari scholars and Umari preachers in order to defend Aisha and shelter and safeguard her against any sort of criticism and censure from the Shia position is the sixth verse in the Holy uh, Surah of Al Ahzab. The verse states that the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is awla bil mu'minina min anfusim, has greater authority over the Muslims and the faithful than they themselves have over their own lives, and that his wives are their mothers. This uh, portion of the verse, that his wives are their mothers, is used by them that since the wives of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam are our mothers, and mothers uh, deserve great respect, and great veneration. Therefore, the wives of the Nabi sallallahu including Aisha, they are beyond reproach and beyond censure and beyond criticism. <clears throat> is this the meaning of the verse? And if if this if it is true that this is the meaning of the verse, that the verse of the Quran uh, makes it obligatory on Muslims to uh, respect and honor the wives of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Is this obligation absolute? In other words, no matter which kind of uh, uh, misbehavior is evinced and displayed by any wife of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, she would remain beyond reproach and beyond condemnation. Is this the meaning of the verse? Or there's another meaning of the verse as well. Inshallah, in this segment, I will briefly give you an, an introduction with respect to the true tafsir of this verse and what the Omri scholars hide from their commonalities. And inshallah, uh, in the coming episodes, inshallah, I will explain this matter in, with more detail. This is the verse that I just recited to you. Uh, this is the Holy Quran uh, printed in Saudi Arabia. Uh, King Fahad. Uh, printing uh, complex translation by Dr. Muhammad Taqiyuddin Al Hilali and Dr. Muhsin Khan. Surah Al Ahzab, Audu Billah min Shaitan al Rajim, and Nabiu Aula bil Mu'minina min Anfusihim, Sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa azwajuhum wa azwaju um muhatuhum. The Prophet is closer to the believers than their own uh, selves, than their own selves. And his wives are their believers' mothers as regards respect and marriage and blood relations and that's the rest of the verse <clears throat> we'll prove inshallah tabaraka wa ta'ala in this episode very briefly and the coming episodes with more detail that the uh, meaning of the verse is that the wives of the nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam are forbidden to be married to any muslims after the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam passes away from this world. And it's forbidden for any Muslim to marry any of the wives of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we will also explain that Aisha binti Abi Bakr, she herself uh, stressed and enunciated that this meaning of the verse is true. However, does the verse state that the wives of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam deserve respect and great esteem of course this that's also one of the meanings of the verse we do not deny that however that meaning of the verse that obligatoriness of esteem and veneration and uh, respect with regard to the wives of the nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam is not absolute and unconditional inshallah tabaraka wa ta'ala these meanings would come with respect to the uh, 
first portion. That the uh, this this verse means that it's forbidden for the wives of the Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam to marry, and it's forbidden for the Muslims to marry one of them. Should the Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam pass away? Uh, this is the tafsir of Ibn Abi Hatim al Razi. An Rasulillah sallallahu alaihi wa wa sahabahu tabi'in one of the most uh, authentic and reliable tafsir uh, which uh, narrates the aqwal of sahaba the sayings of sahaba in the Rasul sallallahu alaihi wa sallam according to the Umari madhhab uh, written by Hafid Abdul Rahman ibn Muhammad ibn Idris al Razi this book was published in Darul Fikr and this is the 10th volume thereof at the year uh, 1424 after the migration of our Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa in Darul Fikr in Beirut. <clears throat> so, page number 3150. وَمَا كَانَ لَكُمْ أَن تُؤْذُوا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وآله, Verse number 56 in the Surah of Ahzab. That what is wrong with you that you may uh, intend and purpose to... Um, cause discomfort to the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and it's forbidden for you to marry his wives after he passes away. We will talk about that first later inshaAllah tabaraka wa ta'ala. And Ibn Abbas, the first uh, narration from Ibn Abbas, fi qawli ta'ala wa ma kana lakum an tu'udhu rasulallahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ibn Abbas said, this verse was revealed nazalat fi rajulin hamma an yatazawwaja ba'da nisa'i an-nabiy sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ba'da This was verse was revealed with respect to a certain man a certain man who had intended to marry one of the wives of the nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam should he pass away qala sufyan dhakaru annaha aisha sufyan al-thawri one of the gigantic Figures of uh, Omari scholarship said that uh, this woman was Aisha. Someone had intended to marry Aisha. Inshallah, in the coming episodes, we will prove that that person who had this unchaste thought and who had s spoken these very dishonorable words with respect to Aisha, and while the Nabi وسلم, was alive, he is none else but Aisha's cousin, Talha ibn Ubaidillah At-Timi. And Talha is, of course, one of the Al-Ashara Al-Mubashara. Ten uh, Sahaba that, according to the Umri congregation, have been given the glad tiding of entering paradise. So, therefore, there was this talk among Sahaba. Inshallah, we'll prove this matter from so many different uh, Umri sources that this person indeed said these words. And he wanted, he had this intention. So the, the verse was revealed that you may not marry the wives of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Uh, this is Jami'u al-Bayan, Tafsir al-Tabari, very famous and uh, arguably the best Umari Tafsir that narrates the sayings of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alihi and the Sahaba in Tabi'in with respect to the uh, exegesis of the verse of Quran. Jami' al Bayan li Tabari, Al Juz Mujallad al Hadi Ashar, the 11th volume, Tab'u Dar al Fakr, and this is the Tasi Ashar a part, and this Tafsir, 19 part, uh, uh, was published in the year 1430 after the migration of our Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa in Dar al Fakr, Beirut. In this book, uh, please um, see what in Surah al Surah al Ahzab, An Nabiyyu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Aula bil mu'minina min anfusihim wa azwajuhu ummuhatuhum, Yakulu ta'ala dhikru. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says so, An Nabiyyu Muhammadun sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Aula bil mu'minin, has greater authority over Muslims than they do themselves. Yakulu ahakku bil mu'minina min anfusihim, An yahkuma fihim bima yasha'u min hukmin, Fayajuzu thalika alayhim. He deserves greater authority over Muslims than they do themselves to order and to issue judgments and decrees and Muslims with respect to their lives and their affairs however he pleases and whichever judgment and decree he may please. And that decree and that judgment and that command would be uh, 
would be uh, enforceable and would be valid with respect to Muslims. So that portion means this. That is the meaning. Now, with respect to the second portion. It begins from here. The, uh, this portion of the verse, the, the wives of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam are the mothers of the mu'mineen, of them are the mothers of the faithful, of the believers. In Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the hurma, the for, being forbidden, hurma being forbidden, being forbidden of the wives of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the same of being forbidden of their mothers. Their mothers are forbidden from what? Huh. Allah says, Ibn Jarir al-Tabari says, فِي أَنَّهُنَّ يَحْرُمُ عَلَيْهِنَّ نِكَاحُهُنَّ مِنْ بَعْدِ وَفَاتِهِ صلى الله عليه وآله كَمَا يَحْرُمُ عَلَيْهِمْ نِكَاحُ أُمُّهَاتِهِمْ The hurma, hurma, haram, hurma is the masdar. The quality of being forbidden of the wives is the same as their, uh, that of their mothers. This means, that the wives of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it is forbidden for the wives to marry, to engage in nikah with anyone after the demise of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And, and it is, but it is forbidden, uh, I'm sorry, as it is forbidden for the believers to marry their mothers. So, وَأَزْوَاجِهُ أُمُّهَاتُهُمْ according to Ibn Jarir al-Tabari means solely the for uh, uh, the hurma of nikah that the nikah of the wives of the Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam after his demise should he pass away is forbidden. Neither the, any of the wives can marry, nor any Muslim can entertain the idea to marry one of the wives of the Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Now, inshallah, in the coming episode, we will explain this matter furthermore and more detail. The important thing is that Aisha herself, herself, she, uh, uh, she uh, stressed that this is the meaning of the verse. The meaning of the verse according to Aisha herself, uh, according to the narration that a number of uh, Omari scholars have narrated, that she stressed that she is the only the mother of men. And she is not the mother of believing women. And inshallah, tabaraka wa ta'ala and Umari scholars, they have declared that this position and this tafsir by Aisha herself means that the verse only and only means what? Only means that, that it's forbidden to marry the wives of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Therefore, according to this exegesis and this interpretation of the verse, the ayah, the verse, does not even mean that it's obligatory to have great respect for the wives of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Although, although I accept that it's a correct meaning, nonetheless, this meaning is not respected and not um, promoted by Aisha herself. Inshallah, tabaraka wa ta'ala, this matter will be explained fully and in more detail, inshallah, in the coming episodes. And also, inshallah, tabaraka wa ta'ala, we will explain that if that we agree without any question, without any doubt and hesitation that it's utmost important to respect the wives of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And it's a great honor, great position, very lofty uh, position for a lady to be married to the Sayyidul Anbiya, the Lord of the Anbiya alayhi wasallam sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and our Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Nonetheless, this command of having reverence and respect for the wives of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam does not mean that they are beyond reproach, beyond condemnation. Should Quran al-Kareem, should the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam have uh, expressed condemnation or censure or reproach with respect to any of the wives of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or should they have explay, displayed and exhibited an act which defies Iman, which is not compatible with Iman and piety. Inshallah, tabaraka wa ta'ala, 
this these matters will be covered in the coming episodes. Inshallah, please pay attention. I'd like to be brief, and I would I wouldn't uh, want to be very go into great details. Inshallah, but nonetheless, it's not possible to present these discussions without explaining the matters with some detail that's required and without showing the uh, sources and the references that are necessary in order to prove my points. Alhamdulillah.